thoroughly that you guys are going to watch it. Yeah? Okay, so go ahead and double click on the execution file of this software, Power Tools for Windows. So if you double click on it, guys, I hope mine will work and yours will work. We did it yesterday. So we, when we get that screen, I hope it's not the screen of the blue screen. <laughs> All right. Okay. Come on. Come on, please. There you go. Can you guys give me a thumbs up when everybody's there? Okay. You you don't don't worry about mine. Yours is gonna look different than mine. Everybody's there. Cool. Ashley, Tao, are you guys there? Yes. No. Are you guys there? Don't worry about the stream. But sometimes the screen. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're there. Yours different. That's okay. okay. That's okay. Don't worry. Don't put it too hard. Okay. Feel I can walk you through it if it's not working. So do me a favor, a couple of things before you before we start. Um, let's go to project. Everybody can go to project right at the top. Cool. Project, right? And open, uh, I'm sorry, new. Project new. Cool. Everybody got that one, guys? Project new. Thumbs up. Yes. Okay. Call it industrial project. Industrial project. What you guys are doing is you're creating a project so you can work on, right? Okay, can you guys see where it's going to, it, it, it will default your project into the software. Do me a favor, just for the heck of it, and go put it on your desktop now. Make sure you default it to desktop so it puts it on your desktop. Then later on, you can put it anywhere you want. So can you do that? Change it. You know how to change that one to desktop? So I created an industrial project that's going to be mounted on my desktop. Cool? Everybody's there? William? Cool. All right. When you're there, hit save. Now, all what you did is you just created um, a new project, a new project. Okay. When you create, do you guys have this window? Something similar? Yes? No? Okay. Go to the, <clears throat> I like to work on what says one line diagram where it says that one here. Can you guys see that, that window? Go expand that window. So you, yours will look something very similar to this. And that's where we're going to start. Now, Ashley, you are ready to construct your one-line diagram. This software works on one-line diagram, guys, or, or risers. You have to construct your one-line diagram. Before I, I go ahead and start, I, I want you guys to, I want to write the steps if you're going to write them with me here, the steps that you need to use this software. Step number one, and I'm going to write it right on here, and you feel free to write them, guys. First, we need to build build one line diagram we need to build the one line diagram in the system piece of cake build the one line diagram step number two so that's build the riser the one line diagram or the riser step number two we need to input data chris unlike the unlike well Revit actually is uh, populated with data unlike cad Every time you put a cable or a transformer, you have to populate the electrical data in this component. You're going to see. So first we build it so it looks like the riser or one line diagram that you guys did with us. Then we need to populate the data, input the data into it in. We're going to input it in one line diagram. Cool. We're going to input the data. Just put data in the one line diagram. 
Cool. Number three is we're done. Number three, when we when we build the online diagram and put the data in it, you are done. Literally, you are done. What do you need to do then? You need to run analysis. Run analysis. Here's the analysis that we're going to run. You can run a lot of analysis. We're, we're going to run power flow B. That's A, B. We're going to run short circuit. Short circuit, right? You're familiar with the short circuit, three phase and single phase. Short circuit. C, we're going to do coordination, over current protection, through coordination. Over current protection coordination. So when we're done, see, because the first two steps are really building the system. The next, the, the step three is pushing a button. <laughs> done. Am I clear, guys? So really what we're going to do with me today, we're going to do step one and step two. Step three, I'm going to show you how to run reports on the software. Um, Chris, you're a computer guy, garbage in, garbage out. If you put the feeder like you did here, guys, if you put four out and it's supposed to be 500, you're going to get completely wrong answer. I'm not interested in the right answer. You guys have never seen a software yet. I'm interested at this point of using a software. By mistake, if you put 500, then you're supposed to put uh, three out and you came up with a, a wrong number at this point. That's not my interest. I would hope you would put the right numbers because you guys have them in the riser, but that's really not my interest though. The last one is reports. Reports. We do, we do these things, guys, because we're going to generate reports. These reports will be given to electricians in the field so they can adjust the equipment, set the equipment. Now, what type of reports? I want you guys to go to page, please, page three, Dash C. This, these are all the reports that you that you need to uh, see. That package that I gave you. Everybody can see that package. That package, the project package, basically. If you guys go to page three, right in here, item number C. Page three, item number C, right here. Page three, item number C. That will tell you all the reports that you are supposed to print for your friend Chet. Right here. Page three, item number C. Um, I want to read them for you guys. I'm not going to write them because they're written for you. I see power analysis. I want you guys to print a one-line diagram, 11 by 17, from this software. Piece of cake. I'll show you in a second. I want you to print short circuit report, piece of cake, after we did the report. Uh, number three, input report, all the data that you input in the software, print it in a big, thick report. Load flow report, that's the voltage drop and the sizing report. Uh, coordination curve for the MCC. And instead of the MCC, if you guys are there, can you say, um, instead of MCC, um, can you write a coordination curve for M mechanical panel uh, one? Let's do mechanical, mechanical panel one, because we don't have MCC. And instead of coordination curve MCC, let's use mechanical panel one. Coordination curve chiller, coordination report, mechanical panel one, and coordination report chiller. These are the eight things I want you guys to, to print from this software. Okay? And I'll, I'll show you how to do them in a second. Any question there's about the, the software? That's the outcome. The first two steps is what you need to put in the software. Everything else is just show me, Chad, how to print this. Really? Cool? All right, let's go build the one-line diagram. So everybody knows what we're doing. We're going to build the one-line diagram first. Piece of cake, building it. Second is putting the data in it. Kind of tricky a little bit. If you follow up with me, you'll, you'll put the data in it. When you're done, we're done. Just push a button to do the, all these analysis that we did. Okay, so you guys printed them. Can I uh, move away from this screen? I made a copy of this too for you. Okay, so let's go and build the riser. Uh, I'm going to go directly to my friend... I sh show you what we're going to do. Um, here's a, here's a riser that Chris, thank you, and, and, and Nick um, agreed to share with us. Can you guys see this riser? I'm going to start. Here's what I'm going to start. I'm going to start. Uh, because, okay. Yeah. I'm going to start with the transformer that's coming from the, uh, the utility. Everybody can see that? I'm going to start from the utility and moving inward to the switch gear and all these panels. I'm going to model, they call it modeling all these panels. I'm going to put them in a model. Cool? Model the panels. I'm always, 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 we're going to start from the transformer, the utility. That's your source of power. That's your source of power. 
and then so that's going to be my number one and this will be my number two the switch here and after that i can go any way shape or form right cool so that's where we're going to start we'll start with one to the switch gear, and then we can go in any order for the rest of them. Model them, we're gonna build them. Okay, you're gonna see it's easier said than done. So I'm gonna go take a snapshot of this, and let's start building. Um, go to my um, software, right in here. Okay, the first thing we need to do, guys, is these are your um, input devices, we're at the top, your input devices. Can you guys see that? I'm gonna just pass through over over them. This is a new bus. A bus means a panel. In your mind, every time you need a panel, what do you need? A bus. They call them buses. Okay. You'll hear this in a second. The second one right next to it, Chris, is and don't click on them, please. Yet the second one is um, a cable. The third one is a transformer two winding. Don't worry about the three winding transformer. Uh, don't worry about this transmission line. Don't worry about uh, this uh, this one here. These one, don't worry about them. I want you to worry about this guy. Can you see where it says new utility? Everybody can see where I'm clicking here. New utility. Go click on this. Are you holding a symbol that looks like this? All right. So go click somewhere and like here and drop it. Chris, you have just brought Excel Energy to this. Did it open a, open something like this for you? You have to put it on the line. Or well, it really doesn't matter. Wherever you, you put it anywhere you want. Doesn't matter where you put it. Cool. Okay. Can you, can, is, does everybody have a symbol like this dropped anywhere? Doesn't matter where. Cool. If you're there, guys, do me a favor. Double click on the word, the, the text here. It opens, it opens the text, right? Call this electric utility. So I'm just going to name it an EM electric. This is my electric utility. That's the source of power for the whole building. Everybody's there? See how easy that is? Okay. Now, Chris, this is equivalent to the transformer from Excel. That's your Excel transformer. Equivalent to the Excel transformer that we have. Cool? No. That's it's not there. When I clicked on it, it opened up. Uh, oh, that's the data window. We're going to come to this one. Yeah. Uh, if it opens the data window for guys, for you, just go into the, uh, and cross, cross the, yep, right there. There you go. That just, we we're coming to opening the data window. Cool? Can I have thumbs up that we have a utility? We have connection with Excel. All right. Let's go out now. Chris, what do I need to bring cables? Now, think about it. I need to connect to the utility to what? Cable, sets of cables. So can you guys grab, see where it says cable here? Everybody say new cable right in here. New cable, right? I'm going to click. I'm holding a cable inside my in my hand. I'm holding a cable in my hand. Can you guys see my cable? I'm holding a cable in my hand. Everybody's the same. Now, can you guys see these, um, um, these uh, oops, these circles at the end of the cable? These two circles at the end of the cable. Your job is to line up these circles so they can connect physically, mechanically. Chris, can you guys see my hands here? I'm going to go with them, line them up so they can connect. Cool. So if you guys put them over each other and click, now you have just connected your cable into, you have just connected your cable into your, um, uh, your cable into your utility. <clears throat> can I have thumbs up, Chad? We did it. Cool. All right. Awesome. All right, so let's go name the cable. Every time when we go to Mishad, guys, every time you drop something, you need to give it a unique name so you understand it. So we're going to call this. Um, these will be, well, before we name it, when you name, you double click. When you name, you double click on the text, by the way. By mistake, like uh, not by mistake, but if you double click on the icon itself, it will open the data interface. We will do the data in a second. We're not interested in the data yet. That's where you put your data. If you did this by mistake, can you guys see the lower X here? The lower X, uh, hit the lower X and that will bring you back to the one line diagram interface. You can move that text anywhere you want. Can you guys see, you grab the text? And by mistake, if you grab, if you hover, you can move that wire. You can move it anywhere you want. Can you guys see that, how moving it, hovering it? If it got tangled like this, can you guys see how it's tangled? You can untangle it, grab it and bring it down. Okay. All right. Before I name though, 
let me let me go now. This cable is going to land in a panel, right? Right? The switch gear, main switch gear. Now, Chris, what did you name your main switch gear? I'm going to use Chris's uh, SG. That's going to be my SG. Can you guys see the SG here, Chris? So I'm, I'm going to go right in here uh, directly into my SG. So I'm going to go. The, the panel is a bus. Can you guys see this dark thing here? Everybody can see that? William, everyone, click on that. Now I'm holding a panel in my hand. They call it a bus. All right. So all what you need to do now, make it overlap that circle. Physically, mechanically, make it overlap the circle. Can you guys see that? Overlap that circle. Cool. Can you make it? And when it's overlap the circle, click. Now my boss and extend it. You can extend the boss. You can move it around. Okay. Um, so now I have. Does yours look like mine? Connected. If not, if you drop the boss, here's my another boss. I'm I'm dropping my boss, and putting it right here. Right. It's not connected. Can you guys see that? So to connect it, you can just bring it and dump it right to the cable. Obviously, we have one. Now, if you drop multiple cables, you're going to right click. Can you? I want you guys to watch this because it's very important. Now, I don't know. I, I don't mind if you are pro-cloning or against cloning of a human being. When it comes to this software, you have to believe in cloning. Cool. There is a term called cloning. You have to believe in cloning. And I don't care a lot of you if you are pro-war or against war. In this software, you have to believe in a word that they call it destroy. Very two very important words. One of them is destroy. Destroy means you remove that component completely from the project. Delete is not destroy. Delete will remove it from this interface. So if you want something to completely disappear from the whole project, what do you, what's the word they're going to be using? Destroy. If you want to clone something, you want a copy basically of something, they call it clone. Okay, so if you guys look at the, the one that I did right here, right click on it. Now don't do that because I had an extra extra boss. Right click on it. Can you see how it says clone? Clone create an identical copy for it. But I don't want an identical copy. I want to go destroy. Where's my destroy here? Uh, uh, down on this uh, 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 copy clone. What happened, guys? What? That's it? Oh my god. Okay, can you guys see where destroy is? Now, now for somebody like Rob, destroy means a lot to you. So we're going to go right here and destroy that piece of equipment. Okay? Destroy means you completely remove it from the system. Okay, now we, are, we brought Excel into the switch here. Do me a favor at this point. Can you guys hover over, hover over that bus, hover over it until you get these two lines? Can you guys see these two lines? I don't know if you can see it. These little two arrows here, can you guys see them at this end? Okay, now if you um, click and hold the left button, you can extend the bus. Can you see guys from both sides? One more time, you can extend the bus. One more time, pick it off if you do that. Okay, we're gonna pick it up. If you go hover at the end, can you guys see that? Chris, can you see that little thing? You can extend it, expand it. I need to expand this. Why? Because I need to connect a lot of stuff to it, right? This is my main. Okay. Ashley and uh, Phil and uh, Phil, you don't have it. Dustin, all what, you, what we did, drop, uh, were you here when we did the utility? Okay, go right here. That symbol, where is the symbol of the utility again? Right in here. Click on that one. Cool. Yep. Drop it. Then go to the uh, cable right next to it. Here's a cable. Click on that cable. I can do it on the side here for you. Here's the utility. Here's my cable. I grab the cable. Make sure these two circles line up. Okay. And then grab a bus. It goes so fast. Here's, here's what we've done. Cool. Everybody's okay, guys, so far. All right. Okay. Now I um. I have an extra. I'm going to do my destroy again. Highlight them, like uh, pick them up. They're uh, right click on them, and I'm going to go destroy. Don't destroy yours. I'm destroying my extra stuff. Can you guys extend? Everybody's looking at something similar to, to what I'm looking at. I need to name now. 
Can you guys go back to the end? Can you guys see where that name here? See that little name here? It says boss. Double click on it. Double click on the boss. You open the text. If you double click on the text, you open the text. If you double click on the icon, you open by mistake, by the way, if you went here and you double click on this, you open the window where you're gonna put the data. We're coming to this window. This is the data interface. We're not gonna go there. If you did this by mistake, go to the lower X and cross it. Okay, I'm gonna go to the text, hover over the text and double click. Everybody open the text. Okay, now this says my switch gear, except I'm gonna call it B for boss. So B dash switch gear. Now. Um, Rob, I think you made a copy for your colleague, what, Mishad Kool Erickson have their own standard of naming them. A lot of people, guys, you follow the industry standards that they do wherever you go, but B stands for boss, meaning it's a panel, and switch gear, it's a switch gear boss, basically. Okay, why B, boss, switch gear is that panel for switch gear. Did you guys name it this way? When you're done, hit OK, not cancel, and now you have just named your boss. Now, Chris, we're going to go back to that little... A cable that we brought the power to the switch gear. Can you guys see that? That cable here. Click on the text. Double click on the text and write in here the same thing. Uh, cable dash. Now, what, what do you think I'm going to call this cable to? This cable is going to where? To the switch gear. So I'm going to call it cable CBL dash switch gear. Switch gear. So Ashley, every time I see this cable, I know that this is the one that's coming from the utility to the switch gear. It's so important, guys, to name them a meaningful name because later on you're going to have a 100-page report, 100-page report. And you look at all these feeders, and all of them, they say feeder 001, feeder 002, 003, 004. What the heck is 001? When you give them a unique name, you can understand where you are in the one-line diagram. Okay? Everybody's okay with this? Dustin? All right, so when you guys named it this one, click. So here's what I did. First, I named the utility, electric utility, by clicking on the, on the text. Second, I named this, the, the cable. And third, I named the bus gear. Cool? Can I have thumbs up that we're there, Chad? So we just, we, we brought the power to the switch gear. Okay, from the switch gear, I'm going to start going everywhere else in the building. So I'm going to show you quick, uh, my friend, um next one line diagram so here's what we did guys we brought the power from the transformer into the switch gear right now i'm going to take the power and go to mechanical panel one mechanical panel two mechanical panel three before we do there before we do that here's here's what i want to do to expedite the process if you listen to your friend chad you can make things very fast okay i want you to see the similarity between can you guys see mechanical panel two right mechanical panel one and lighting, uh, lighting panel, and what else? Um, lighting panel, and I do have a uh, lighting panel. So can you guys see that these three, where's the emergency panel, Chris? Do we have the emergency panel here? Okay, well, we're gonna have, from here, we're gonna have also emergency panel, okay? Can you guys, do you agree with me that these are very similar type there's a cable going to a panel, a cable going to a panel, right? All of them are very similar. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to model one and clone. Remember what you guys were not here. I said in this software, you're going to believe in two things, regardless of what your belief system is. Number one, you need, you need to believe in cloning. Cloning as in copying the symbol as well as the data with the symbol. Number two, you have to believe in war because we're going to destroy. The word that they use is destroy, not delete. Do not use the word delete or remove. Destroy. If you want to remove something completely from a project, the word that they use is destroy. When you pick things, it becomes blue. Have you noticed, guys? Guys, every time you pick things, it becomes blue. That's the, the default of the software. Okay. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to go build one model and copy it four times. Cool. I'm going to go build this mechanical MP2. Cool. And I'm going to copy it how many times? Clone it. One two, three times. Why? Because it's similar. They're very similar. It's just a cable going to a panel. Cool? All right, let's go do that. Uh, did we say anything about the data yet? We're building what? We're building the model. We're not talking about the sizes yet. All what you're doing is just tying a cable. Later on, when you, when you jump in, then you can play with the cable size. You're just showing a, a symbol. 
Okay, so let's um, let's go back here, guys, to this software. Okay, here's what I'm going to do, guys. I need, um, <clears throat> in order to do that, I need a circuit breaker, right? You have to start always with circuit breaker. Ashley, can you see where it says new low voltage circuit breaker? Can you guys see that, that symbol here? Here's a fuse. I'm using circuit breakers, right? New low voltage circuit breaker because there has a high voltage here. Click on this symbol. Everybody click, see where I was? Click on this symbol. And I'm going to put, and then if you hover over it, see how that I'm holding it in my hand and go make it touch the bus and left click now you have a circuit breaker to title make a mistake made a mistake right here so if i'm going to drop one here say i by mistake i dropped mine right in here right oops and by the way if you open the the interface window no problem see that little close the bottom you go back so i had two of them by mistake i had two right so here's what you're going to do uh go select it and you can move it, you can move it, oops, going too fast here, you can move it, you can drag it and move it, And but I don't want it here, so I'm going to go right click, and what do we say? Destroy it, Chad. Okay. Any question guys about bringing this? So I have circuit breakers. Next, what do I need? Cable. Let's go grab a cable. Here's my cable, the same location that we grab the cable, and tie it to the circuit breaker. Can you guys see, make these two circles overlap. Two circles overlap and then they tie together right okay now they are tied together okay then I need a bus a bus is a panel here's my bus and I'm going to tie this bus can you guys see I'm holding a bus I'm going to make it touch that circle and guess what you can you can adjust them move them a little bit hold them and drag them down a little bit so you can space them out can you guys see what I'm doing I can move them around okay does everybody have this type? Cool. Okay, now when we go to Michelle, they're going to show you a way of modeling the panels. I'm going to show you uh, there are two ways of modeling the panels. There's the easier way for the short circuit and then the detailed way to get you the panel schedule. I'm going to show you the easier way and later on we'll get into because it gets guys involved, you can put all your branch circuits for the mechanical equipment right into the software. That's what Michelle does, and they print a, um, uh, a schedule directly from Power Tools for Windows, okay? Do me a favor, though. I want to go assign a load for, um, well, that's a hard thing. Let's let's just say this was, let's name it. How about, let's start by expanding it slightly and naming it. I'm going to name this one, double click on it. I'm going to call it the same thing, B4 Boss, oops. I'm going to call it B for bus, and I'm going to call this as mechanical panel um, dash one. Cool? So B, M, mechanical panel dash one. That's the bus, right? I'm going to go to the cable that going to it. What do you guys think the cable name is going to be? The cable that goes to the panel, cable dash mechanical panel dash one, right? So every time I can see this cable, I know this is the cable that's going for the mechanical panel dash one when I do my analysis. Okay, now anybody can get me a, um, when you click on the name of the circuit breaker, I know it's a circuit breaker, so I like to do CB for circuit breaker, dash, what do you think I'm going to dash it? I'm going to name it based on the panel, so it's going to be CP dash, mechanical panel dash one. So every time I look at this circuit breaker, I know it's a circuit breaker that's feeding what? Mechanical panel dash one. So when you guys are done, you should end up with a branch that looks very similar to this. Cool? Everybody's there? Okay, so that's my mechanical panel. Now for mechanical panels, guys, we have a lot of, um, lot of equipments in it. Because we have we have tons of equipment in the mechanical panel, as you as you remember, my mechanical panel. So typically for mechanical panels, if you have motors, you model the motors one at a time. And I will spare you a little bit uh, the hassle of of doing that. And we're gonna model two of them. I'm gonna so let's just go to the mechanical equipment first here, adjust it right. Let's do cloning. Before I before I do anything, I'm going to go clone this one. Okay? Do me a favor. From left to right, go draw a square around it. 
or rectangle or box it in. Cool? From left to right, box it in. Make sure only this branch is blue. Can you guys have thumbs up when only this branch is blue? Right? We're going to clone. So you're going to go hover over it first. Make sure you hover over it. Put your cursor right over it and right click. When you right click, it gets you this option, all these options. Do I want to destroy? No. Do I want to remove? No. I want to clone it. Clone it means create a copy for me, identical copy. So can you guys, everybody see where your clone is? As I said, you're going to believe in cloning here. Clone. Guess what? What did you get? Don't click anywhere else. Did you get a, an identical copy of that? Right? Don't click anywhere else. Sometimes if you click anywhere else, guys, you get mixed up. Right? Leave it blue. Everybody's blue. If you clicked anywhere else, you can fix it. It's not a big deal. While, while it's blue, guys, make sure hover over it until you see this symbol of movement. That's from CAD. The moving symbol. Everybody can see the moving symbol? Right? Right here? Okay. At this point, only when you see the symbol, anywhere on the blue, only when you see the symbol. Can you guys see that? Oops. There you go. Right here. Then lift, click, and hold. Now I can move it all together as a block. I am moving it all together as a block. It didn't. Is there any way you can go back? Um, hmm. uh, okay, then then guys, drop it. Make it make it touch the bus so it can tie to the bus. Okay. Um, I don't know. Edit. Uh, undo. Undo move. Yeah. Here's undo move. You can undo move. Your control Z works. Undo move. Good point. Okay, everybody guys have two. See how it keeps always also the names, it keeps adding one to it. Okay. So the second one, guys, I'm gonna call the I'm gonna call re rename this one. This is M2. That's great. I mean it just named the second one for me, right? This is mechanical panel two. It's already named for me. Do you guys have mechanical panel one and two? Everybody's there? Mechanical one and two. Okay, how many times I want to clone this one? Remember. Three times. Okay, so I'm going to go, it doesn't matter which one of them, highlight mechanical panel one or two, right click, and make sure it's uh, blue, right click on it, clone. Now when you're here, you're going to have a mess, right? Okay, they're going to go hover over it until you see the movement, uh, the moving sign. Then you're going to drag it and bring it back to here, right? Can you guys see I'm dragging it, holding it, and bring it anywhere else? So I have another panel. Right? I want to rename it. It says three, but I will rename it. I want to clone one more time. Let's go to the third one. You can clone any one of these. Right click on it, clone it, and drag it and attach it. So guess what? You have built three identical, three panels. Cool? Three panels. But remember, the first, uh, it's mechanical one and two. Then the third one, it's not a mechanical panel, so I need to go rename it. Do double click on it. The third one was, uh, Chris, what did you say? LP for lighting panel? Yeah. LP. So it's going to be an LP panel. Okay. Then the cable, guess what? The cable is going to also be an LP, LP cable. LP cable, lighting panel cable. And um, the other one, the circuit breaker is also going to be an LP. So actually, I'm doing my analysis. When I see the circuit breaker sitting, I send it to the electrician so they can have the sittings for it. It will say LP, and the panel says LP, LP circuit breaker. They tie the two together, the same name. Cool? Okay, let's go to the one, the fourth one, if you guys are done with the fourth one. We're going to name this one emergency panel, EP. Uh, EP, right? We call the emergency panel, or whatever you guys named it on yours. Uh, this is also EP cable. And the last one, this is also an EP circuit breaker. EP circuit breaker. Oops, make sure you put a dash. EP circuit breaker. Okay, so here's your EP. We build a, a three, a four panels now. Mechanical one, mechanical two, and so forth. I'm gonna start with, with lighting panel because it's easy. Um, Chris, what was the, the KVA load of your lighting panel? The KVA load of your lighting panel. Okay. The lighting panel was 200 amp, right? 
So I'm going to go attach. I didn't put any load yet. Uh, I need the KVA. How much KVA did you guys come up with? Well, I can use another example, guys, that we. Okay. Channel VA is uh, 104. 104. Okay. So now we're going to go to your load calculation. Remember how we did on the load calculation the um, KVA calculation for lights? And we're going to attach a load. Now I want you guys to pay attention to where we get the load. Can you guys see here where it says L non motor load? Are, are lights non motor load? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's right, non motor load. So I'm going to click on this L here. And can you see now I'm holding a load in my hand and I'm going to go both and attach this load to the lighting panel and the, and also I'm going to attach another load to where? To the emergency panel. Why? Because these both these loads are actually non-motor loads, right? They're lights. They're lights. Everybody's there, guys? Okay. L is right in here. Can you see it? That's non-motor load. Why did I pick non-motor load? Because I know that these panels, what's on them? Lights, they're not motors. Cool? All right, so naming, let's go to name. Um, uh, when you name it, guys, I'm gonna go double click on it. I'm gonna call it uh, load. What do you guys think I'm gonna call it? Load what? LP, load for the lining panel. Load LP. Um, and what do you think the second one is gonna be? Load what? The second one, I'm going to call it load EP. Cool. So now I assigned a symbol for the load. I didn't put the KVA yet. I did not put the KVA yet, but I assigned a symbol for it. Now, actually, I'm done with lighting panel, emergency panel, uh, and lighting panel. Done. Done with with the one line. I, I need just to put the data on it. When putting the data is a piece of cake, you're going to see it in a second. We know the KVA or the amps and the voltage, and that's what you double click on it, put this data where it should be. Okay, can I have thumbs up that we have these guys? Yes, no? Tao, Ashley, Dustin? Rob? Okay, so that's, you can zoom out, guys. Look, I mean, you have tons of space to zoom out of the whole system. Um, anybody stuck on the, on the top here? It, Nobody's stuck probably here. So here's my, uh, if you have a zoom, a wheel, it becomes really handy. Okay. I'm going to go back to the mechanical panel and model one thing. And you guys are going to model a bunch of others. Okay. Can you guys go zoom? And again, you can expand this, move them aside, guys. So look at this, Chris. By mistake, if I grab this one and I dump it right on the top of the other one. Look at this. Now that's where a lot of people get a mess here. As long as they are all blue, I can go hover over them and until I get that movement signal and move it anywhere I want. Look, I can move it here. I can move it here. It's still connected. Can you guys see that? I actually can move it on the top. Oops, now this is where, where, uh, where it becomes uh, interesting when you only pick one component. Um, so when you move the branch, make sure you highlight all the, the components of that branch. Okay. What I'm going to do, so we named them, guys. I'm going to go back to the mechanical panel number one, and I'm going to put some mechanical loads on it. Mechanical loads on it. So to help me with the mechanical loads, I need um, I need to look at these loads, right? And I apologize, you guys have inputted these loads three times so far. Actually, four times. One time in Revit, one time in Excel, and one time in um, Cummins, right? And a fourth time is going to be in this software. So it's, um, it's interesting. It would be nice if Revit can do all these. Imagine if Revit can do all these analysis and sizing generators. Wouldn't that be nice? You put it in one location. So here's a retirement plan for you, Chris. Synchronize all these softwares together. All right. So I'm going to go to mechanical panel number one. Mechanical panel number one, guys, what are the loads on mechanical panel number one? Uh, mechanical panel number one. Um, all the exhaust fans, um, air handling units are in mechanical panel number two. Um, you know what? Because mechanical panel number two is has a lot of stuff on it, I'm going to go start with mechanical panel number two. 
Oh no! Here's the here's the issue with with um, with the panels. You can model them two ways. So let's make it easier for you. The proper way of modeling them is to model them as load as motors. Okay, that's how you get the best answer because motors guys act as a generator upon an existence of a short circuit, so they give you more contribution. The poor man's job is to lump sum them in one KVE and put them exactly like we're going to do the light. Oh, so the motor, you can't. Uh, you can, but it will give you a rough estimate. If to get the exact answer, you have you have to, especially substantial motors, like we're not talking about three and two and one horsepower motors, uh, 15, 30, 40, higher than that, you start modeling them. Okay, um, guys, I'm going to go drag this, remember that branch, the branch that's coming out of mechanical panel two, I'm going to start with two, cool? I'm going to move it down here. You can move it all. Can you see how I moved it way down so it can work on it? Can you guys do that to me? Move it way down, drag it and drop it down like this. Cool. I took, I took. You know what? I actually don't need the circuit breaker. Let's let's bring the circuit breaker back. The circuit breaker is going to be mostly here. I just took the cable, and actually the cable could stay here. Just the bus. I took the bus down. And expand it. Can you guys expand this baby for me, please? Expand it, because I need to add to it some equipment. Expand it. Are you looking at something similar, Rob? Okay. Let's go put a motor, and you guys were going to do. This is mechanical panel number two. Mechanical panel number two, I'm going to. There's an air handling, 60 horsepower air handling, right? So let's go grab a motor. Can you guys see where it says uh, new induction motor and new synchronous motors? 99% of the time, actually, you're going to be induction motors. Can you guys see where induction motors? Everybody can see that? Okay, a click. Well, before we do that, we need, what do we need? We need an overcome protection device and a cable. So let's go grab an overcome protection device and a cable. Let me show you. So grab an overcome protection device, which is this. Um, just, a breaker. just a circuit breaker. Just a circuit breaker. Any, just a low voltage, this one right here. Okay, then grab a cable. Here's my cable. Make sure they tie. Oops, if they open the, uh, component editor, don't worry about it here. Then grab a bus. Okay. And look what I'm doing here. I'm building my, my, uh, actually, so here's, here's the branch that's going to go to the air handling unit. Okay. Now let's go grab a motor. Why Can, do you need a bus? Oh, thank you. I was waiting for somebody to ask, why did you add a bus to a motor? The term that they use, Chris, for bus means, I didn't. I told you that it means panel. That's yeah. It and that also means a connection to a power load. It also means a connection to a power load. Okay? It means a bus or a connection to a power load. Okay? Um, I'll show you later a, a, a few things. You know what? Do you guys have, everybody drop the bus? Everybody drop the bus? Okay, can you highlight it like this? Like I did? Please, right click on it and destroy it, will you? Just go destroy it. Everybody, destroy that bus. Okay, so you just have a cable and, and a circuit breaker. Cool? Everybody have a cable circuit breaker? Let's go tie a motor, uh, um, an induction motor to it. Okay, here's my induction motor. Can you see that? I'm grabbing a motor. And what do you think to tie them together? What do I need to do? Just make sure the two circles overlap. Two circuits overlap, right? Can you guys see that? And up it goes. Here's my motor. Now, Chris. To answer your question, do you see that dot here? Yeah. That's a hidden bus. You can expand it if you want data about this point, or you can collapse it if you really care less about the data. Data means, do I want to pull what's the short circuit right at the terminal of this motor? Do I care? If I care, I'll expand it. If I don't care, I only care about the panels. Most of the time, we only care about the panels. I collapse it. Collapsing it, making it a dot. We'll, we'll, we'll look at this one in a second. Cool? All right, let's go name these. Let's start with the naming. The first, the, the load. I'm going to call my load. Um, this one is going to be air handling unit. Uh, this, let's start with air handling unit R1. Air handling unit um, R1, right? That's my motor. What do you guys think the cable is going to call? say? Do you see the cable is going to say Chad or is going to be, say air handling unit 
I want to identify the cable by the air handling unit. Air handling unit um, R1. So this, every time, Ashley, you look at this cable that comes out of the report that you need to replace, it will tell you this is tied to the air handling unit. Guys, this will document your project. Every single cable will have a unique name or set of cables or conduits. These are most likely conduits. Cool? Now, what do you think the overcome protection device is going to be here? I always like CB because they're circuit breakers, right? They're circuit breakers, dash, um, air handling unit, dash, R1. Done. So I have a unique branch that directly telling me that this is going to the air handling unit. Air handling unit. Any question, guys, about this? Any question about this? So I have my air handling unit modeled. I modeled my air handling unit, right? Now I'll show you how to expedite the process in a second. I show you how to expedite the process in a second. So to expedite the whole process here. All right. So we have the mechanical equipment, one load only. You know what we're going to be doing? We will clone this one. How many how many motors you have? But before we clone it, I'm going to make it easier for you. Let's put some data on it. it with, with, with motors, when you clone with data, it, it's, it's expedited the process more for you. Okay. So we're going to stop right here. I'm going to switch slightly, guys. Um, give you a quick break, and then we're going to switch slightly into inputting some data. And so we'll, we'll be bouncing between building it and, and doing data. Let's take five minutes break. Let's have some fun with this software, guys. Okay, so we have a mechanical panel one and two. Can I trust that you guys will uh, we build the rest? I want to switch into the input data. Remember how we said uh, we can build a system? I want to continue building. I can continue building the system. Um, so if you guys remember, here's uh, Nick's uh, Nick and uh, Chris's uh, riser. So what we did, we did the mechanical equipment. I want to continue building the system, but before I do that, I'm going to put some data because of the lack of the time. We're running out of time. I'm going to show you how to put some data in, and then we'll go back and, and continue building it. Cool? Okay, so here's um, here's my system. Let's go back. Okay, now, when we input data, again, can you guys go zoom directly into the utility, please? Everybody is right at the utility, right at the top. Okay, this is your start point for now we're, we're switching to step two which is the last step, inputting data. We're not done with the riser. We could continue building the riser, which we will. But I'm, because of the time, I'm going to jump into and start putting data. Okay, do me a favor. Hover over the utility icon and double click. You open um, um, an, um, a window like this. And at the top here, Chris, they call this window component editor, for a lack of better term. So you can see what they call a component editor. Now, Ashley, you can toggle between these two. You can toggle between these two. Basically, the, there are two windows you're going to be in at all times. One is the one line diagram window, which is it's right in here. Can you guys see that? So here's your software. It's like a rabbit. You can minimize them. One window is a one line diagram, and another window is a component editor. Let me go back again. Expand this, Chad. Here you go. And if I want to minimize it, can you see here, minimize? I want to expand that one, and here's a component editor. Okay, not to confuse you, you're always going to be in a one-line diagram. Every time you want to go to the component editor, you double-click on an icon. So let's go double-click on the utility, like I said. Everybody at this point. All what you need to do here, there's a lot of information that you can get out of it. Chris, you, you will enjoy this one. They do harmonic impedance. They can do reliability data. They can analyze the reliability of the system. I want to spare you the details and get you to understand that there's tons of information you need here. But to make the system work, you need one number right in the whole thing. The one number that you need, guys, is can you see where it says utility contribution? Do me a favor right here. Click on this right at the bottom and change this one to amps. Can you guys see where it says amps? Change it to amps. You don't want to do anything else other than putting a number for the three phase short circuit contribution. When you guys have a building and you tie it to the grid, 
If you have a short circuit right here at Dunwoody in our switch gear down there, Excel Energy will be able to push certain amount of short circuit directly into our building. This short circuit is only limited by the impedance of the transformer. You guys remember how we did the uh, short circuit at the secondary terminal of the transformer? We took the volt amp, divided by the voltage and 1.73, we found the amps, and then from the amps we uh, divided the, the full load amp by uh, the impedance and we found the short circuit, okay? This number, you get it from Excel. That number right in here, the C was that, that number, three pairs, you get it from Excel. Cool. Now, because we don't have, we're not going to contact Excel, I did some calculation for us, guys. Based on the 4,000 amp switch gear that we have, right? 4,000 amp switch gear, you probably will end up with a 2,500 kVA transformer. If you do a calculation on a 2,500 kVA transformer, Basically, find the full load amps. I think the full load amps is 3,000, right? Take the 3,000 divided by a typical impedance of 5%. That will get you close to 60, 62,000 amps contribution. So I'm going to make an executive decision and ask you to put 60,000 amps right in there. So here's the 60, 1, 2, 3. I want to remind you, Chris, there is not K here. So it has to be an M. And right underneath there, that's the three-phase contribution. Right underneath it, did they put 60? No. The right underneath it, that's the three phase. If you take phase A, phase B, phase B, bolt them together, flip the switch, right? The ground fault, you typically I put it half of this. So what's half of 60? Do we need a calculator for this, Chad? Okay, 30. One, two, three. You can, um, if you don't know, you can leave it also at 60. Typically half of, half of the three phase. Cool? Where do we get these two numbers, Chris? You tell it. If you don't know them, you take the transformer, find the full load current divided by an impedance of five or six percent impedance. You get you a rough, rough idea what's the available, what's the allowed available circuit in, inside your building. That's your start point. Nothing will happen unless you start here. How are we finding the full load current? For the transformer? You're not finding it here. I, all what the utility cares about, this component, all what we care about is just a short circuit. We don't care how much current, full load current you pull out of it. We're going to limit the full load current by the down, downstream, by the cables. Okay, when you guys are done with this, oh, by the way, there is no, you can save here, but can you see that lower X? Everybody can see where's the lower X, not the top X. Cross it. Then you go back to the utility. Everybody's there, guys? It, well, really saving it, you have to hit save here. Yeah. But yes, it doesn't, it, it doesn't cancel. Yeah. There is no okay after you leave there. Yeah. Good point. All right. Okay. You tell it is done. Cool. Let's go to this bus. Do you guys some, remember the switch gear, Chris? What's the voltage of the switch gear? What's the voltage of the switch gear in this building? 48277. So double click on the switch gear bus. It opens a window for, the, for you here. Very, very important point. It says nominal system voltage. What is your nominal system voltage line to line? We care less about line to neutral. So what do you need to go, do here? What do you guys think it's going to be? 480. Cool. Everybody's okay with that? That's all what you need. It, there's some information about arc flash and harmonic and reliability. The only thing I want you to put is the voltage right at the switch gear. So what's my voltage? 480. Except there is no okay. It's already saved. Now, Chris, by putting the voltage <clears throat> on the switch gear, the system will assign the same voltage for every single panel tied to the switch gear unless you have a transformer between the panel and the switch gear. For example, let's go to the emergency panel and check the, vo the voltage here. Can you guys see the emergency panel? Double click on it. What do you think the emergency panel has? 480. But we didn't put 480 in it. Why do you think it got 480? It since that it's tied with a wire to a 480, it assigned the 480 voltage to it. Can I have thumbs up? We understand that, Chad. The only difference is if you have a transformer between them. And Nick, if we have a transformer, of course, the secondary of the transformer most likely is going to be completely different than the, the primary, right? Okay, so everybody got that one. So now, do I have to worry about the voltages anywhere in my system? Unless I bring a transformer, I don't have to worry about the voltage. The voltage is set everywhere at what? 480. Even the loads, I think if you click on the loads, they assign 
Let me click on the load, see if uh, they pick the voltage up. Can you guys see the, the even the load pick the voltage that you assigned to it, 480? Everything tied to the switch gear with a wire, no transformer, will pick the same voltage. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We got it. Move on. Cool. All right, now I cable. Can you guys see that cable here? I need to assign a cable. That's what you guys want to wake up. Okay, so double click on the cable. Now it opens this window for you. <clears throat> Because we we don't want to, you can you can have two options. Option number two, the bad option, is to put the information by hand. No, 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 don't do it. Option number two, every single component here, guys, have a library. Tons, tons of cables. All, uh, Chris, you'll enjoy that one. All 310.16, 17, 18, all these code tables are inputted in the software. So, do me a favor. Do you see where it says library here? Everybody can see where it says library. Can they have thumbs up? Yeah. Double click on the library. When you open it, yours might not be as expanded as mine, right? So you it will sh oops. click, it will show something like this. Do you guys see that? Right? So go expand it, expand the library. Everybody can see where it says expand the library. You will end up with something like this. Okay. I want to want this is this software is so powerful. Every single cable, high voltage or low voltage, well, almost every single cable is right into the software. So Ashley, we're doing low voltage. Low voltage here means 600 volt or less, right? We're not doing high voltage because you can do high voltage here. So double click on low voltage. Everybody's at, it defaults to low voltage. This is how you read this. First of all, they have the manufacturer. If you want to go to, or IEEE, IEEE, everybody familiar with the IEEE. Um, we're going to be using, can you guys see 310.16? They have not updated this to 310.15b16. That's the 310.16 that we use. So you're going to go default to WordPress to 310.16. Everybody can have thumbs up. IEEE 310.16, right? That's us, an EC. All right. Now, which one of them, Chad? If it says copper, we are, you, your friend Chad is vested in a copper company. So what do you do? We're going to vest it to copper. Can you guys see where it's duct material? Duct material. Can you, everybody can see that at the top? Duct material. If it says magnetic, this means it's metallic. If it says non-magnetic, this means it's non-metallic. So if you're doing non-metallic, which one are you going to use? Non-magnetic. That's how they define it. So please remember, non-magnetic means um, non-metallic. Okay? Uh, right next to it, insulation is PV. Don't worry too much about this one. Um, insulation, THHN, THHW, are familiar with that. Uh, and in conduit. Uh, and the most important thing where it says conductors. Can you see that? Chris, this is how you read this, this section. So we know, for example, we are using um, 310 16. I need magnetic. This is like PMT. Um, insulation, PVC, that's just for the wire. I'm using THHW, yep, uh, in a conduit. Okay, if you guys see. If we're using PVC from the utility, it doesn't work. Yeah, I know, but I'm just showing, I'm showing in, uh, an example. You're right, we're using PVC. Uh, this means, please remember that. Can you guys see what it says 4 C? This means it's a four conductor cable. Can you guys understand that one? This is the most confusing thing. If it says four slash, this is a four conductor cable. It's a cable, four conductors inside it. Cable, four conductors inside it. Okay, if, the, if it says um, this one, can you see that one above it? Everybody can see the one above it. This means four single conductor cables. So basically four cables. So this one is actually one, two, three, four. And this one, believe it or not, is only one cable, one, two, three, four coming out of it. Can I get you guys to understand the difference between the way they do 4-C? It's a four conductor cable, one cable, four conductors in it. If it's four dash one, uh, four, um, four one dash C, this means it's a four conductors, each one of them is a single cable. You're gonna default always to a four conductors, each one of them is a single cable, right? Because we're pulling separate conductors. All right, so that's what you're gonna do here. So let's go pick up one, Chris, uh, for, for the service. Okay, for the service. Uh, I'm going to use um, um, uh, four conductor. Uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to tell you why I'm going to use this one. I need THW. 
I'm going to use uh, right one, this right here. Let me tell you for the service why I use this one. 310.16, right? 310.16. It's, uh, uh, we need non-magnetic though. We're going in PVC. Let's go down, right? We need PVC. I lied to you. There you go. Right. Oops. No, Chad, don't do that. Okay. It's not going to allow you to go without putting a link here. Um, I want to go back to the library. Sorry. And I'm going to go to right here. So 310.16 cover non-magnetic, right? That's a PVC. Uh, THHW, we don't want THHW. We need THHN right in here. Okay, this is what you want for the service. You want non-magnetic PVC. You need a THWN, why THWN? Well, location, outdoor. We need a conduit and 4-1 slash C. What does 4-1 slash C, Alaribo? Four single conductor cables. Why four? Three phase and a neutral. Do I need ground coming from the utility? No, I don't need a ground coming from the utility. Okay? Everybody pick this cable, guys. Even at the ground of the transformer? No, the utility take care of that. Okay, everybody guys got this cable. Can I have thumbs up? Yeah, we got this cable. When you're done, double click on it. Double click on it. And then see the exit, the, the upper right corner? Exit. You go back into the information here. So now, Chris, we need, everybody got that type of cable? Okay, now, what size, Chad, and how long? Let's go to the size. Can you guys see the size here? Chris, um, how did you size these, 500? How many runs of 500 did you come up with? Um, 500, Chris sized them, thank you. 500, and how many says, how many sits in parallel? Uh, 400, okay. So let's use Chris's design, it's 400. And 12 sets, right, Chris? Mm -hmm. 12 sets. Let's go to, can you guys see where it says sets? That's better, Lynn. There you go. So what I did, I put 400, size KCM 400, 12 sets of them. Can you see where it says parallel 12 sets? You, it would not allow you to leave unless you put a link here. Now, how far? Because of the impedance. Okay, so from the utility transformer into my switch gear, you can go measure it probably 60 feet, right, from where we did it. Let's put 60 feet. So 60 feet length, oops, 60 feet. Um, so with the termination and so forth. So I can't emphasize, Rob, you would never be able to be allowed to move this unless you put the size, how many you're patterning, if any. If not, there will be one, and the length. Every time you have a cable, you have to have a size and a length. And if you're paralleling, obviously, you have to sit. And you have to pick the library for it. Any question guys about this? Done. Exit, and you're good to go. You don't know, okay, nothing. So this cable has been loaded with information. Okay? Now, I'm going to go. Now, do you guys agree with me that every other cable, other than this cable, every other cable is going to be THHN because we're inside the building for the most part. Some of them will. Okay? So I'm going to go to uh, pick the cable right here, the one that's going to um, MP1. Double click on that one. Can you guys see that one? The one, the MP-1. I'm going to go pick that one for the MP-1, and then to make it fast for you guys, I'm going to copy that one for all the cables. I'll show you how to do that. All right, so we're going to go to the library one more time. Library. Okay, Chris, now we are inside the building, so we're going to use THHN and EMT conduit. So THHN, EMT conduit. How many conductors, and do I need to use a ground? Here's my default. Can you guys see that one? I'm defaulting 316 IEEE uh, magnetic because it's EMT, THHN because we're indoor, and we're using four single conductor cables. Why not with ground? It, it says with it, do I need to pull a ground with them? If you have EMT, you don't have to. A lot of engineers do for reliability. I'm going to leave it up to you for the calculation. We're going to pull <clears throat> only four conductors in, a, in an EMT conduit. Everybody got that one, guys? That's indoor. Cool, magnetic, because it's the conduit is EMT. So double click on this. When you double click on it, it will t give you that uh, warning. You have to put the length. See where it says the length here? And the size, of course. You can't go. Okay, let's go to the size. Uh, Chris, for the ma what was your size for the mechanical panel number one? Anybody has a size for mechanical panel number one? It was, uh, what is it, a 600 amp panel? Yeah, I've got two sets of... Um... Three -aught. Okay, two sets of three aught. What's the size? Three aught. And the size amp size. Four 
400. Okay. Okay, let's go use Chris. Two, uh, two sets of three out. Here's three out, and here's two sets. And you guys will put your own size here. Okay, somebody might have not paralleled here or paralleled a different number. And the link. Now, mechanical panel, we're in mechanical panel. Which mechanical panel are we? Mechanical panel number one. If you guys remember in Revit, mechanical panel number one is um, right next to the trans, uh, to the, um, right next to the switch gear. So I'm, you don't put anything less than 20 feet, regardless of what you do. Um, so let's just say 30 feet because of termination and so forth. So I want to put 30 feet, right? Because remember how they were right close next to each other? Otherwise, you're going to go measure the distance and rev it. Cool? Did you put the current in here somewhere? No, you don't put the current. Okay. The, you don't put the current. Okay? And when you're done, you exit. Okay. So now, <clears throat> no, not really. You have to click on it to do that. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a very a quick way, guys, of I'm going to copy the same cable into all these other cables in my system. Let me show you a very, very powerful way. <clears throat> so here's the cable that I did. <clears throat> Excuse me. And instead of every time going to the library, I know that this cable for MP1 most likely will be almost the same, the type of the cable, not the size, the type of the cable, the type of the feeder, the same. So <clears throat> do me a favor, right click on this, click, if it's uh, blue guys, can you see that? The one that I installed, right click on it. <clears throat> one more time. Pick the cable, right click on it. And do you see what it says copy data? They allow you to copy data from one component to multiple other components of the same type. I can't copy a data of a cable to a generator, can I? Doesn't make sense. You copy a data of a cable to another cable. So they have to be apples to apples. Okay, one more time. What you achieve is when you copy the data of a cable to another cable, it just it, it cuts in your time going to the library. When you then you copy, it will copy the same size. Everything is the same. Then you go back to the cable and just adjust the size and the link. You don't have to go to the library. That's why it's it's expedited the process. Okay, right click here. Can you guys see a clone? Uh, no, not clone. Copy data. Everybody can see where it says copy data, copy data, copy data. Okay, now I copy the data. In the copy clip, I need to dump the data. So to dump the data, do me a favor. Zoom out so you can see all your cables and click. Now you're going to start picking up cables. One, if you hold control, the control button, hold it and pick just the cables. Can you guys see only the cables? Oops, if you did what I did, go back again and hold control. Can you guys see that I picked the, remain, the remaining cables in my system, right? When you're done, did you guys pick them up by holding the control and picking them up? Okay, when you're done, go hover over any one of them, the one that you picked, and right click. Does it say paste data? Do you see where it says paste data? Dump the data. So what you did, now all these cables are assigned actually the same size for the mechanical panel. Now, that's not true in terms of size, but at least when you go there, you're going to find the library there. All what you have to do now is adjust just the size. Cool? Let me do one thing. So I'm going to go to, Chris, I'm going to go to your lighting panel. Could you please, I'm going to go to the lighting panel, and Chris is going to give me, double click on it. Can you guys see that all the information from the library is here? And also the size is here, except it's the wrong size. So Chris, what was the size for your lighting panel, please? Was it too hot? The size of your lighting panel. <clears throat> No, I'm right here. I'm going to go to my lining panel, the cable. Yeah, the cable. The cable. Double click on the cable. Uh, lining panel, cable. And what was the size of your cable? Anybody can give me the size of your cable? I have one set of two watt. One set of two watt. Thank you. Here's two watt, and here's one set. Okay. Now, what's the length? Remember the lighting panel is right next to the switch gear. I will leave the 30 feet is not far away. <clears throat> cool. So I size the cable. I, do I have to go to the library? 
No, why? Because it's EMP, it's for conductor, right? And I don't need a ground because EMP is grounding me. Yes, sir. You really, the length, you don't want to put anything less than 20 feet, no matter what. I mean, especially when you're going with feeders. So if you look where, where the mechanical panel is located versus the switch gear in the same room, depending where you put it. So you have to measure the distance. Allow, usually we allow six feet of termination in each panel. Six, six, that will give you 12. And the horizontal and the vertical distance between them. So I assume between the six, six plus the horizontal vertical, 30 feet will be good enough. And don't sweat it with half a foot and, you know, plus and minus, and these guys, plus and minus, uh, I would say 10 feet within, plus, not big deal. Okay, so we got that, so we're done. So now all my cables, guys, are assigned, all the cables that I did um, are assigned, uh, are assigned the library, okay? Any question? Any question so far, guys? Any question? Okay. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go assign a couple of things. So we we did some data. I want to go to the load. Chris, I'm going to go to your lighting load. Double click on the lighting panel load. What was the KVA of your lighting panel, please, Chris? The lighting load? KVA. The KVA. So when you guys did the lighting load, remember the KVA load of your lighting panel, the actual KVA. Was it 105? I think you said 106. Yeah. 104. 104. So you're going to go to your load calculation and find the size. So 104. You can also put it as amps. If you want to put the amps here, but if you put like 200 amps, it might, that's the size of the panel, not the actual load. So you put your actual load here <clears throat> to get a better better idea. 104, power factor 0.8, leave it. All the, these lights are burning at 2, 2, 8, uh, uh, 277, so we'll leave it. It's a Y. Can you see it says Y here? So we're good to go. So, yeah. oh, click on it. I'm going to click out. If you go to, see where it says load here for lighting, oops, for the lighting panel. Can you see right at the load, right? Double click on it. And then you put 104 or whatever you load you came up with. I think 104, we have 106 in the past. That's very close to what we had. Okay. It does. The software do because see where it says Y here? That's how it, it analyzes it. Yeah, it's Y grounded. It always defaults Y grounded unless you tell it otherwise. No, this is defaulted to Y. Connection Y. So phase A, B, and C, not delta, Y, ground. I will leave it as the default, Y. You know what they mean. Should be a grounded Y. Y, ground. Yeah. I will leave it, it's a Y. It's 277. Really, it doesn't matter. It's looking at the whole big chunk of load. It's all seen as 480 load anyway. Okay, so we got these. Let's go to the emergency panel, Chris. Double click on that one. This one is really peanuts. If you guys calculate it, you might find two KVA. I'm going to throw 10 KVA just because. <clears throat> not a whole lot of load on it. I don't put anything less than 10 is not worth even putting in the software. So throw a 10 here and call it a day. Um, okay, so here's my, uh, my loads. Cool. So I'm going to go, then I'm going to go down to the air handling unit, Chris. And Ashley, my friend, let's go to the air handling unit. Everybody is at the branch of the air handling unit. Let's go put horsepower for the air handling unit. Remember that? So I'm going to go double click on it. When you double click on the air handling unit, it tells you the voltage has been defaulted to the following. The only thing they want you, Chris, to put is what? The horsepower. So what was the horsepower of, uh, of that particular one? How much? 25 thank you my friend 25 done that's all what you need to do oh yeah um so this is anima uh link to the library anima okay so we got these we don't have full volt current okay um uh so at this point at this point leave it at this leave it at this running okay 
So 25 horsepower. Everybody get that? That's the only thing I added here, 25. Close it. Now, Chris, how many of these do I have on the mechanical room? I'm going to go clone all the air handling units. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six of them. I already have one, so I'm going to go clone five more. I'm going to do this fast, and you guys are going to be doing it for the whole system. So highlight the whole deal. Right? Right to left. Everybody got that one? One more time. I mean left to right. Pick it up, right? And we're going to start cloning. Right click. Clone. Here's the first clone. Grab the whole clone. <clears throat> Oops. I don't want to do that one. I want to make sure it's it's all connected. Yep. And then attach it. Here's clone number one. Okay. Right click again. Oops. Uh, I lost my clone. I'm going to go clone again. Right click. Clone. And if you right click and, and grab it and attach it, here's the second component. See how fast it goes, guys? Right click again, clone. See how fast? Here's the third one. How many did we say we want? Six. Right click, clone. And here is the fifth. And how long? Now, if I lost my blue, just go pick another blue. They're all the same at this point. Right click and clone. And Chris, how long did it take me to put all these six air handling in it? How long? Less than a minute? 30 seconds? Okay, here's my six air handling units. Now you need to rename them, obviously. The naming is not the right one. So let's go. I'm going to go to the second one, guys, and rename the second one. The second one should be air handling unit R2. Well, it's already named R2. So double click on it. The size is different, though. The size, Chris, for this one was one. 15. So I'm going to go, the only thing I need to change for R2 is 15. Let's go to R, we don't have R3. Yep, we have R3. Um, R3. So this one is R3. Let's go to R3, guys. R3 happen to have a 20, <clears throat> I'm sorry, 20 horsepower. So just all what you have to do is just go put 20 here. Um, and done. Um, now, if you guys click on the cable, the cables are sized wrong right now. Remember, the cables are sized wrong for these. Um, and then you can go to R, R4. R We don't have R4. We have S1. I'm going to call this is S1. S1. Oops. Oh, here you go. S1, right? And I'm following S1. And don't forget that the cable have to also say S1. S1, and then you guys will, will go through the whole deal by yourself, S1 here, S1, I'm just going to do this to do a calculation, so S1, the horsepower in S1 is 60, so I'm going to go put my 60 horsepower here, done, <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> the second one is S2, I believe, and S3, S2, right, S2, um, and S3 is the third one, so we can make sure it's S3. And this one will be S, uh, oops, I'm going to make this one S2. And we'll make this one S2. Oh, no, this was S1, sorry. I lied to you. That will be, yeah, you have to follow the, the naming con the convention name, S1. And then S2 here, S2, and S2. S2. And let's go all the way to S3, guys, and then we'll, we're done. S3, S3, and S3. I put my cables S3, S3, done. Now I think S3 was, uh, what was S2 size-wise? S2 was 25 horsepower. No, S2, 50. So I need to change this one to a 50 horsepower. And S3 neck is what? 60. 60. Thank you, sir. S3 is 60. Done. Okay. Any question, guys? Yes, sir. Now the cable for our air handling units are not used for full wear cables. Absolutely. Yes. And that's where we're going to do a little trick here. Very good point. Let's go to, so we put all our air handling units. 
all our air handling units. I want you guys to go double click on air handling unit R1 cable. Air handling unit R1 cable. Everybody's there, air handling unit R1 cable. <clears throat> uh, what was the size, Chris, that you guys did? We got one number eight. One number eight? Okay, so, oh, but remember that's different. These are four conductors. So let's go get a library. Yeah. Let's go to get, get the library. I'm going to go back to the library. Now, the air handling unit, guys, does not need, um, does not need <clears throat> uh, a neutral, right? And I'm going to go directly, and it's metallic. So I need one that says 3, 1 dash uh, C. Uh, non metallic. Okay, THHW 3 dash 1 C. Where's that 3 dash 1 C? Uh, right here, the closest. Do I have 3 dash 1 C with our ground? Right here. What does the 1 dash mean? So if it says 3 C, that means it's a 3 conductor cable. Yep. And if it says one dash C, this is a single conductor cable. One dash C is single conductor cable. Okay. They don't have a metallic. Okay, the only my only option here is guys is three dash one C with a ground. Just pick that one. Cool. Tia Chan, metallic. So I grab my cable. Now let's go size it. Chris, uh, what did you guys say your size is? Eight? Yeah. Number eight? And let me go to number one. Are you sure? It's... What is it? Uh, this is for uh, air handling unit one. Yeah, that's not bad. It's a 24 horsepower. 25, I mean. 25 horsepower. Uh, voltage is 480. Uh, and wire size number eight you are right on the money and how far where is air handling unit number one right where the panel is so 30 is not far away because you're right in the same room and so this should really be mechanical panel two are we doing in this is mechanical panel two that we're working on right now okay so so yeah this is the at least mine is mechanical panel two Otherwise, you can change it. You can change the name of it. Okay. So what I did, guys, I put the information about mechanical for about um, um, air handling unit cable. What I'm going to do because it's closer to the truth, I'm going to go copy the data from this cable and actually dump it into all the other cables in my in the air handling units. Paste data. What would this what would this give me guys is the type of three conductors with a ground, no neutral on them. Any question? So I I'm, I'm just trying to understand the convention. So three dash one slash C would be three dash one slash C is three single conductor cable, three wires. Each one of them is a cable. Three wires like these. Each one of them is a cable. Jacket. If you, do you guys know the difference between a cable and conductor? Yeah. Conductor, you have conductor. You have to put in a conduit. A cable, it has its already jacket over it that you can pull it separately in a conduit or in a cable tree or whatever. So, three conductor cables <clears throat> versus multi conductor cable. You know how multi conductor cable. And then they're running. <clears throat> then they're running separate ground conductors. We're running a separate, in this case, separate ground conductor. Single yep. Single conductor cable. Okay. <clears throat> Any question, guys, about this? So, <clears throat> what you're going to do is you're going to go build the system for Chad. Any question about building the system? Is it size the conduit? Uh, no. Any question about building that system? We haven't talked about the circuit breakers yet. This is just building. So can I trust you guys to walk in right now and build your one-line diagram here? One-line diagram here. Let me show a couple of things for the one-line before we move the one-line diagram. I'm going to grab this. Uh, go to emergency lighting panel, branch of the emergency lighting panel. 
Are you guys there, Tao and Ashley? Are you guys with me? No? Yes? Rob? Yeah. Three what? For what? Where did you get the three for which uh, load? Okay, which one are you? Uh, tell me which load. That one, double click here. Okay. Uh, conductor, this one here? Yes. You have three? No, no, but I have three. And you guys are upset because there isn't no three? Did... <laughs> Go to the next one. Go to the next one. Three is not a commonly um, carried by manufacturer size, so you, you probably, that's why they don't have it here. Yeah, so you go to the next size too. That's what I thought. Okay. Okay, just go to the next size. If it's not there, go to the next size. Um, okay, so here's, um, let me show you guys. So we say we are done with this system when you guys build this system. Let me just go run a couple of calculations for you. So say we're not done with this system, obviously. Say we're done with this system. By the way, guys, we will uh, we will hit the coordination next week. I just want to prep you for what Michelle is going to do. I want you now. <clears throat> can you guys see where it says run? Run. Can you guys see run? Now we're going to run calculation on. Okay, run. We're going to run balanced studies. Everybody can see run balanced studies. Cool. What do you want to run, Chad? I need to run demand load. Um, I, you can run all these studies. What I want you is load flow and short circuit. Can you guys see that? I want you to run load flow and short circuit. Okay? Let's go run it. <clears throat> One more time. Go run right at the top. Run what? I want to run. This is how you run all your analysis. Run. I want to run not transit. I want to run balanced system studies. It opens this window for you. You can have four options. Demand load, sizing, or load flow. <clears throat> I'm going to do the short circuit because that's one of the single most important things that you need to do. What's short circuit in my system? Load flow will give you a voltage drop calculation. Demand load and sizing, it will size everything for you. That's dangerous because if you, if you made a mistake um, and you depend on a software to size it for you, that's where the smell um, test. So usual load flow. Okay, when you're done with this, it defaults it to certain location, and you hit run. And now it's cooking software. It's doing analysis for you. Did you guys have errors? Anybody got errors? No? <clears throat> okay, so close. Now I ran, believe it or not, a short circuit analysis load flow on this portion of the, of the, <clears throat> of the riser that I have. You keep building it and keep running it at any time. Every time you run it, it will override the, <clears throat> the stuff that you did. Cool? Now, if you want to go <clears throat> look at the report, guys, that we ran, um, I think one of these icons, uh, where is we here? Can you guys see this icon here? It says reports <clears throat> right here. Everybody can see it right there. Click on it. It will tell you text reports. Yep. And here's the reports that we already ran. Which report do you want to look at? There's three of them. I want to look at the short circuit. That's what you're going to print for me. And here's the short circuit report, guys, for you. Let's go see how many pages there so far. Uh, where is the pages? 16 pages. So the 16 pages so far. Uh, if you guys look, it will tell me, press the emergency, emergency panel here have a short circuit of 47,000 amp. Uh, the switch here has a, a short circuit of 58 so far. So far. <clears throat> this is the fault summary, is how you get the short circuit rating for all your equipment. The short circuit rating for all your equipment. Okay, let's go back. Click on that. All right. Oh, did I... Uh... Close my oh. Why did I close it? I'm trying to find where you found that stuff. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you. 
I hear you. I close my software. Okay, here you go. So if, uh, let's go. Here's my riser. If you guys go to reports, text reports, um, you have four, three reports, short circuit. When you come over here, that's the top. If you drag it all the way to the end, that's where you find the single most important thing that you need to, which is the fault summary. We call it fault summary for all your switch gear. Fault summary for all your switch gear. For the most part. Unless they did something that you guys didn't do. Okay, can you guys go, then you can close it, and you go back to your uh, one-line diagram. So that's how you model your one-line diagram, your one analysis. The only thing I didn't do, guys, with you is um, <clears throat> overcurrent protection coordination. I didn't show you the overcurrent protection coordination. Um, so what I expect you guys to do is grab your one-line diagram and model it exactly the same. Um, I'll show you a couple of things that could be tricky for you. Uh, UPS, Chris. Here's my UPS system. Can you see my UPS? Here's my UPS. Uh, the same thing, you're going to put a UPS and you're going to drag a load and put the load in the UPS. That's it. That's all that you need to do. I'm going to model the UPS for you. So, did I grab a meter? Oh, maybe I was uh, I was drunk today, huh? All right, let's get that one. Where's my meter? Here you go. Thank you. A UPS. Thanks. <laughs> Here's my UPS. I need the load to the UPS, drag it, cool, and then a cable, drag a cable here. The load of the UPS, KV, yeah? Oh, oh, the load is right here. No non motor load. Okay, got that one. And we're going to go drag a circuit breaker, put it here, and attach them together. Oops. Or you or you think you're gonna attach them together. There you go. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. So you can insert a circuit breaker. At any time. Yep, absolutely. At any time. You can insert any of these or remove them at any time. Okay. Um any question guys, so what, what required from you is to build the system. Um before I so that's my UPS system. And then you just put the data in it. One thing I want to show you guys is um, generators. We need, I'm just, I'm going to build just a generator system. Um, Chris, what I want to do for the generators, show you how easy that. Do you see the, um, I want to use, I'm going to clone, since the generator is outside, right? I'm going to go clone this branch here. So see how it becomes big deal to clone things. Okay, oops, I don't want to clone this. I want to clone this cable though. Well, let's use this cable. Right click, clone it. I drag this cable here. I'm going to use it for my generator. This is like the utility type. And do you see where's my generator, Chris, here? Uh, my gens, right here. You see where it says generator here, synchronous generator? Click synchronous generator, drag it, dump this. His generator number one. So you got your generator. Right here, generator, synchronous generator. Cool. For my generator, I need a circuit breaker. Grab a circuit breaker. Can you guys see that one? And you can attach the circuit breaker at any time to the cable. Can you guys see that? You drag it and you put it here. Here's my circuit breaker. And I missed the main circuit breaker for the utility. Drag the circuit breaker for the utility and drop it right at this point. Can you guys see that? Okay, and then we name them. This is how you model your generator. Any question? A lot? A little bit? Too much? Too much info? So you can model the generator. You can model the UPS. What else? It's kind of weird to model. Let me model one little, little and you can fill the info about them. One, um, one thing, guys, uh, might confuse you. If you're not confused already, um, I'm going to go clone this section and go. How about the, Chris, the, what do you call this? Uh, <clears throat> the panel for the receptacle panel. For the receptacle panel, the only difference between receptacle panel, guys, and lighting panel 
is I would have a branch and I need a transformer for the end of the branch. So you can grab a branch. So here's my transformer. Drag the transformer. Put the transformer right here. Yep, good job, Chad. And what do I need to? I need um, a cable. Here's another cable from the secondary of the transformer. Yep, tie it to the transformer. And then what do you think at the end of that transformer I need? I need the receptacle panel. Click here. Which transformer did you grab out of the emergency panel? Where am I? I'm not putting in the emergency. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I just copy, I clone it. I'm, I haven't named it yet. I'm just cloning it. And let me drag the load and attach the load to that. So this branch, can you guys see this branch here? This is how your receptacle panel is going to look like. No difference than the emergency panel press. The only difference is what? There is a transformer. There is a transformer. And then you name your receptacles and your transformer and so forth. Any question? How did you get the uh, dot between the generator and the cable? The dot between the generator and the cable. The dot is a bus that I care less about here. Yeah, how did you get it there? Uh, you should, did you put a cable between yeah. the generator? Do you have a, what, what do you have? You have a bus? What do you see between them? I see a line. A line. If you double click on it, do you see where it says um, not? Double click on it being what? The dot or the I cable. I don't have a dot. I'm asking you how to get a dot. What do you have? guys about the generator modeling the generator <clears throat> any question about modeling your generator modeling your uh, your cables yes no that's with it no question about it good uh, that's a lot right? Okay, um, what I'm hoping, guys, from this, this is just a crash course, we will continue next week. What I'm hoping from this, when we go to Mishad Kul Erickson, as you understand when they start building the system, at least you have opened it, you understand what they're doing. Okay, what's the expectation, guys, when you're done with this? <clears throat> Here's the expectation. Let's go back into into why we're in this business. Um, we build the one-line diagram, or half of it, right? Dustin, my friend. We put input data. It might be junk, garbage, but we did some data. And we ran analysis. We ran the <clears throat> power flow, short circuit. I did not do the coordination. I will do it next week with you. We do the coordination next week. And reports, I opened the reports, one, or, one uh, reports for you guys. And that's what you're gonna be Printing for me. Any question about this software? <clears throat> so what 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 they expect? This is not due. By the way, this what you're working on is not due this week. This guys will be doing Friday of next week. So just FYI, I wanted to prep you today for the, our trip at Mashad, so they can show you a couple of other tricks that they do. And then when we come, I'll continue walking you guys through how to do the coordination and so forth. <clears throat> Any question? A lot of people. Okay, let me. That's all I have for you in terms of. So your riser, your riser guys start growing like this. Um, if you when you run it, if you have a fault, I'll show you later on. I'm gonna stop right here, and next week we'll catch up, guys. When we if we make faults, how to correct it and so forth. So that's a good uh, good start at least. A good start. Let me stop right here.